Well, Serap is opposing life pensions for former governors, Nisa Mike, Dave Omahi, and others. And Serap will be joining us this morning to give us details of this matter that they are taking to court to stop the ex governors from the continued receipt, uh, collection of pensions. That will be our first hot topic on the breakfast this morning. As the world goes digital, today on the program we'll be looking at the development in technology, especially in Africa, and the availability of funding for startups. We'll also be taking a look at some national dailies and the headlines that made it to their front pages on of the press. We'll be joined by our analyst to do that on the program. Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Minong Wizigwe. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. It's a Tech Tuesday and we hope that you're going digital for the right reasons. And like they say, anytime that you want extra income, you just might find it on Google or any other, other place that technology has given us the opportunity to be able to connect with. And I do hope that you will have a wonderful time uh, watching us this morning. Yes, and we do have a very, very robust appetite for technology in mm -hmm. this part of the world. Yeah. Although, unfortunately, most of what we consume here are packaged and imported. Mm -hmm. And we want to see that change. We want to see a situation where we can also package and export technology to the rest of the world. So these are part of the things we'll be taking a look at this morning. Yeah. And I'm also very particularly happy. There's news making the rounds that um, uh, girls of federal government, girls college, I think, have also produced their own robot that does the things that they command it to do. And it, when you look at it, it's so beautiful and you just love the fact that they're able to do this. And I commend the, the principal of that school because when the girls were being interviewed, they said uh, before that principal came, they didn't know anything about technology, at least to the extent that the principal made them uh, know. Now she enrolled them in competitions. He, she, she, she made sure that they had a dedicated lab and all the things that were needed to do this. So probably they have done a lot of coding and all that. So now they have produced their own robot in that school. And you know, that just tells us that with a little bit of pushing, with a little bit of opportunity, a lot can be achieved in Nigeria as well. And it also tells us that it all begins and ends with leadership. Mm -hmm. If you have the right leadership, things yeah. will definitely change. If the head is screwed on well, the body will follow suit. Of so if, for instance, in Nigeria, we want to see an end to corruption, mm -hmm. then the president himself must be seen not to be corrupt, mm -hmm. must be seen to be against corruption, and must be seen to be fighting corruptions with the right words, the right actions, the right body languages. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah, and uh, is this, is not, this is not saying that you have to be a saint to be a leader. Uh, at least show us that even if you were corrupt before, uh, you have repented enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because everybody will have one, one kind of skeleton or the other in their cupboard. We are mm -hmm. all humans. But for people to see that, okay, um, even if you've, you've done that journey, you are now ready to change, or at least you've seen that it's not taking you or the country to anywhere. Or even when you were doing it, you were doing it as a person. But now, as a leader, you want a different approach to all of these things, then we'll follow suit. And, and it depends on, like you said, how the leader is. It trickles down to the people, because mm -hmm. body language is enough to put everybody on body their toes. Body language, actions, mm -hmm. you know, these things go along way. you're saying that a new sheriff is in town. And we indeed need to see and uh, feel and experience yeah. that a new sheriff is in town. We, not many Nigerians, if at all, have forgotten how things were in, with the last administration and how uh, the, the level of impunity that we saw play out in the polity. And if, if there is a new sheriff in town, even though it's the same uh, party, we would want to see a change in some of the things, if not all of the things, that we cried against. I mean, why then did we have an election? Yeah. <laughs> like, why is there a change of God? And it should not just be that there's a new sheriff in town, like you said, and it shouldn't be that uh, we had impunity in the last uh, government, but now we're having a different kind of impunity or <coughs> the same impunity with a different name. 
It shouldn't be that way. We should feel the impact of a new sheriff coming in town and feel the relief that comes with good governance because, hey, democracy is about the people, no matter the nomenclature that you're giving to it, so long as the people are carried along and they enjoy it doesn't matter whether it's a, for, for me anyway, it doesn't matter whether it's a monarchy, whether it's an autocrat, autocracy, whatever name you're calling it, so long as I have what to eat, I'm secure in health, I do whatever I want to do, I have some level of freedom that I need because I, I don't need 100% freedom anyway. I, need, I have the level of freedom that I need to function as a human being and not feel that someone is trampling on me and, and pressing my neck and not letting me to breathe, <laughs> you know, those kind of things. So the leaders should not get comfortable that they are in a dem democracy, and so democracy is untouchable. They shouldn't get comfortable. They should get, get comfortable with the fact that they are so good to the people that they don't need bullet cars for, bulletproof cars, for instance. Well, they trust me, exactly, yeah. trust me, the, the Nigerians, African leaders, if they never knew or if they forgot, now they know that democracy can be touched. Mm -hmm. it, it's no longer untouchable, if at all it ever was. Um, with what is happening in the Sahel region, mm -hmm. the coups and all of that, and as you have said, why do they need uh, bulletproof vehicles? Mm -hmm. If they are comfort comfortable and confident that they were voted in by the people to represent them, then what are they afraid of? Of course, we know that politics is dirty. But then, if you are a good leader, your people will protect you. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't see you get hurt and allow anything to come to you that will not be of good to you. Do you also, do you if they need this bulletproof, mm -hmm. as someone has rightly stated, they should use their own money to get it and not use Nigeria's money, taxpayers' money, mm -hmm. to get unnecessary vehicles, very expensive vehicles. I understand that some of them in one state in the East rejected innocent motors, mm -hmm. you know, the vehicles because given to them assembled by innocent motors. Yes. I, I, I thought that was, that was very insensitive of them. Yeah, we, because how do you encourage people for, it's just like, okay, Dangote's refinery uh, will come on stream and then you never buy fuel from him. You go out and buy from another country. That's what, exactly what is exactly. playing out. How do you encourage people in that sector to continue to do uh, things like that? You want a big name, a big brand, and you don't want you, a brand from your own country to be something outside. And then there are, there are other countries that are coming here to buy those same vehicles for their government functionaries. Why are you living in the space where you are as a senator? or a member of House of Reps in your state, why are you there if you do not have that mentality to promote local content? Mm -hmm. If you do not have that mentality to see growth? Mm -hmm. You know, you do not want to see the local manufacturers growing. You do not want to see IGR improved in your state. Why are you there? You are not qualified to be there. So, And I think it's time that Nigerians begin to recall their senators, so-called representatives. We have to begin to sing that song. Mm -hmm. We must begin to know and begin to um, get actively involved in the process of recalling these people when they begin to miss Yan. Because that's what it <laughs> is. When they begin to forget that yeah. they are there and that they can be removed. And they are, they're, so, they're so good in the divide and rule strategy now. Mm -hmm. You know, One group will come and say, hey, uh, this thing you're doing is wrong and it really is wrong another group will just rise up in the in the evening <laughs> just opposing what you're saying whether whether they're making sense or not it's just that okay we oppose this thing that you're saying well, how can you say our leader is not doing good so mm -hmm. they come to the street they protest even sometimes they're violent and all that Red and the then crowd. yes and then uh, they're also very strategic in in placing themselves a lot of them now own some kind of media houses, uh, whether it's a print media, whether it is even uh, online um, vlogs, whatever kind of media, <laughs> because media is what will uh, push the propaganda. Media for. is powerful. Yes, it's very powerful. So a lot of them have done this, and they saw it from Abiola, MK or Abiola, maybe, because he ran Concord. Uh, Concord, and it did a very wonderful job. But, you know, even if you're pushing an agenda, it should be a positive agenda. We should think Nigeria. And until our leaders begin to think Nigeria, it cannot resonate with the ordinary man. Because you want to 
fly from here to go to America to eat pizza. You want to fly from here to just go for a weekend or a spa that you think is better in America. And you're using our money because no matter how you see it, it's our money. They've just given them billions for accommodation. A senator should have a house, right? But now you're giving billions for accommodation to these people who a lot of them do not even sleep in their houses. In Abuja, when you go, there are stories of some of them having permanent houses or rooms or, yeah, or chalets or whatever it is in hotels where they pay through the nose for just one night throughout their tenure. And then you're still giving them this money for accommodation and it doesn't make sense to anybody. Talk about social economy, which is lacking in our society. Social economy is lacking. However, yeah, some offices, most offices come with perks. Mm -hmm. that you can't deny that. Mm -hmm. But then, how reasonable are the sizes of the perks that come to some of our public offices? Mm -hmm. That's what people are, you know, are complaining about. The sizes are just so humongous when you compare it with the, you know, existing economic reality on the ground. So many people are suffering. The economy is at a standstill. There is this new report on our reserve. Yeah, so you can't be broke and be living on borrowed money. Yeah, so it's... In it's opulence. So using op borrowed money to live in opulence. It just tells whoever is watching you that something is wrong with you upstairs. There was this time that uh, they, uh, is it the revenue mobilization and the people responsible for allocating salaries, so to speak, to public office holders. And they were trying to raise the, the money and people complained. And what their response was, was that people of that standing need X, Y, Z. What standing? The UK Prime Minister was riding a bicycle. That's why I said when they want to enjoy themselves and show that opulence that we have arrived, we are big boys and big girls. They should use their money to justify Simple. their bigness and all that. Simple. And leave the taxpayers' money for things that would affect the economy and benefit the generality of the Nigerian populace. Mm. That's just what it boils down to. Perhaps that is one of the reasons why one of our top trending this morning is that uh, over 500 directors have reportedly defied federal government's order to retire because uh, the directors in ministries, departments, and agencies, uh, that's MDAs of the federal civil service, have reportedly defied the federal government's directive, which mandates them to go on compulsory retirement. The directors who were to proceed on compulsory retirement since July 27 have spent eight years at their positions, uh, or they have stayed put in contravention to a new rule. The new rule uh, stipulates that such affected directors should give way uh, followed, uh, following the revised public service rule and the secular issued by the head of the civil service of the federation. So if you have stayed up to eight years and above, you should leave for others to come on. So uh, Dr. Folashade Yamir Son last month gave that to the heads of MDAs directing them to ensure compliance with the new rule and the revised PSR. Uh, so the revised PSR was unveiled last month at a public service lecture held at the presidential Villa Abuja. According to the head of the service, its implementation kicked off immediately with the launch. And then the secular noted that the new rule, which seeks to give room for deputy directors within the federal civil service, some of whom have been stagnated on level 16 for about a decade, to rise to the cadre of director and um, it will see over 500 directors across the civil service on level 17 who have spent more than eight years in their positions proceed on compulsory retirement. So now the secular has been given, everybody has been instructed, if you are stayed up to eight years and above, leave so that others can fill the vacancy. Some, some people have been in a particular position for so long, but the others do not want to leave. Uh, much as I disagree with their the defiance of the rule. I also ask myself, why are they afraid of retiring? Is it because of what they see in the office or because of what they fear when they retire they will meet? Because some of these people will retire and they won't get their benefits for years. Meanwhile, the politicians will get severance package, which comes with a lot of money, and then they will be having some pension for something you did for four years, 
like now, today we'll be talking about Sarah, with Serap anyway, mm -hmm. about one of those things. Yeah. You get a pension from governor, you get a pension or you get a salary from minister or a senator or something. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really make sense. Yeah, and then of course the Tenth Assembly has become like a, a retirement heaven for mm -hmm ex-politicians, ex-governors especially. We have not less than 13 of them in there mm -hmm. receiving sa uh, pensions. Uh, just one of them has uh, announced that uh, he doesn't want to continue to collect that monthly pension. Talking about former governor of uh, Ocean State, or Ogun State, uh, Benga Daniel. Yes. Uh, he's, he said he doesn't want to continue collecting. At that. least for as long as he's there. Mm -hmm. as, yeah. mm -hmm. So, so the, the, let's hope the others, before, well, the others obviously have no interest in following suit, which is why Serap is saying it should be a law. All of you should stop collecting. <laughs> it should be a law. <laughs> collecting as a senator and be collecting as a Expert. former governor. Yeah. You know, enough of the long throat. And by the way, don't you just love the afro of that woman? <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Okay. All right, so moving forward to our second top trending police bans, protests, ascension mounts in Kano over election tribunal. The Kano State Police Command on Monday banned all forms of street protests across all parts of the state with immediate effect following an intelligence report on possible outrage from the judgment of the tribunal on the state election. Addressing journalists in an emergency press conference at the state's police command, the commissioner of police, Mohammed Husseini, informed members of the police to take note that the new Nigeria People's Party and the All Progressive Congress have assembled a crowd to embark on a protest without the endorsement of the Nigeria Labour Congress and prior approval from the security agencies in the state. He warned both organizers as well as the umbrella body that any attempt to disrespect the NLC and the security agencies in the state by playing around the fragile security situation which the combined security agencies have been managing is not only uncivil, criminal, but also a threat against national security. So there you have it. Um, I'm not sure how many people will agree with the police on this. You know, civilians should have a right to protest in a democracy. That's what some would argue. Yeah. Um, well, it is. It is also. Um, uh, it's also right to give out that warning because um, they need to take the appropriate steps if it is to inform the police and all that. But over the years, the unfortunate thing is that over the years, when you have this protest, even if you tell the police or not, they are the same. In fact, sometimes when you're just planning to have a protest or a demonstration or whatever name you want to call it, mm. like now, it is the police that will first of all come and warn you, you must never hold this protest. So that you know firsthand uh, already that um, when you go to meet them, you might not have the approval that you want. Mm. So over the years, I think some people have just grown thick-skinned and thinking or assuming, uh, maybe rightly so, that the police may not even cooperate and this is something that needs to be done. So if they want to do a thing like this, they know the chieftains of the APC and the NNPC. Invite them, talk to them and all that. Let them talk to their people. But now what we see the police saying is we have credible intelligence that people want to disrupt this election. <laughs> no names and nothing. And whether the election is disrupted or not, or whether it, the society is disrupted or not, we don't see the critical people being picked. We see only the people that were used that are being picked. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is picked. So what are we talking about? Oh, well. It's just terrible. It is a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Have you got your cup of coffee, cup of tea, or glass of juice? <laughs> Whichever it is you fancy, do get it because it's getting hotter now. We're going to off the press. We'll be back in a moment to do that. Stay with us.